I'm Brock with PDQ. This is our Getting Started with PDQ Connect series, and this is episode three, where we'll be focusing on groups in PDQ Connect. And this was one of my favorite things. So by default, we have, you'll find a bunch of pre-built groups that have been built by us at PDQ to kind of just give you a starter base of like uh, some easy groupings that, you know, Chrome, Edge, Firefox, things like that, that, you know, most organizations are gonna be utilizing. So you can see we've got 7-Zip here. This is a pre-built group. These groups are really, really handy because they just give you lots of information at a glance, okay? You can quickly decide, like, you can quickly take action on the information provided in these groups. So if we take a look at the 7-Zip group, we can see, we'll open it up. This right here is a folder. Uh, if we open it up, we see we got 7-Zip latest. We've got seven computers in that collect in that group. We've got 7-Zip not installed. We've got nine computers there, and we've got 7-Zip old. If we open that up, you can see exactly which devices belong to each group, okay? And like I said, these are built by and maintained by PDQ, so you don't have to worry about any of these things. These things are gonna be automatically updated by us. We've got 7-Zip in there, Adobe Reader, Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Notepad++, Team Viewer. Then we get down here to our Windows updates. We've got cumulative, cumulative updates. That's a hard word to say. Versions, um, Windows 11 cumulative updates, and we've got Windows 11 versions and zoom down at the bottom, okay? But we can actually, we have all the tools we need to build out our own group. So we're gonna take a look at that, see what that looks like. So down at the very bottom here, you'll see the create group button and we are on the devices tab. But if we hit that create group button, we have an option here, let's give it a name. So let's do, we'll do Atla and you'll see why in a second. Okay, and we're gonna make this a static group. Okay, we have two types of groups here. We've got static versus dynamic. Static groups, I mean, they pretty much are what they sound like. Static groups don't change. You put computers in there and they're gonna stay in there. That group is never gonna change unless you manually remove or add computers to it. Or say you remove a computer from PDQ Connect, it'll show up there. Or it'll, those changes will show up there in that group. So we'll add a static group, okay? Let's just add a few devices in here. We'll do Ang, Iro, Tara, Off. We'll add those to the group and we'll hit create on that. Now that group is right here. We'll see it. We have the Atla group, which stands for Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, but, and then we have all of our computers that are a member of this static group. Those aren't gonna change. Like I said, those are gonna stay there unless we manually modify it somehow. Static groups are great for a couple reasons. We've got like here, you can see these are these are the computers that I actually use. There's a lot more computers in here, but I usually use these computers. So I like to kind of separate them. Uh, another option is you could create like a pilot group for your deployment. So your pilot group, you could send out all the updates to first, make sure that everything's running okay, then deploy it out to production. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at a dynamic group. So we'll go down here, create a group. Let's just call this one Chrome or Firefox. Let's take the time to actually capitalize that. We'll make that a dynamic group. And then what happens, you'll see, so when we when we did the static group, it just automatically pulled up all your computers so you can just add to the group. Here instead, what it's doing is pulling up filters because dynamic groups change based on the filters you have. So if a computer matches a filter you set for your dynamic group, it's gonna automatically be added to the group. If it no longer matches those filters, it's gonna automatically get removed from the group. So we'll take a look at here. Here we're looking for computers that have Chrome or Firefox installed. So we'll go ahead and change this filter to software. Name contains, We'll type Chrome in there and then we'll add another filter. We'll change this to or because we're looking for Chrome or Firefox. And we'll go back to our software table, contains Firefox. And we will create that. Great. As you can see here, we've got uh, all the computers that have either Chrome or Firefox installed. Let's go ahead and take that one step further. We can do Chrome and Firefox. This one's a little bit different. We'll make another dynamic group. We'll start with the same filter here. Software name contains Chrome. And then what we're gonna do is add a group filter. And then we'll go down to software name contains Firefox. Now this should be significantly less devices. 
uh, the number of devices we have that have both Chrome and Firefox installed is probably not the same as that have either one installed. Uh, and the reason you wanna do this is because if you just did another filter right here, what's gonna happen is it's gonna look for software installed on devices that is named Chrome and Firefox in the same software title. Instead, what we wanna do is like separate those. We're gonna add that uh, filter group right there. So we'll give that a create. And we have our filter, sure enough, or we have our group, sure enough, we've got eight devices that are returned significantly less than the Chrome or Firefox. Last thing I wanna show you was folders, which can just help organize things, keep them clean. I'm kind of an organization freak. I love when things are nice and neat. So we'll give this a name, Chrome, if I could spell it right, slash Firefox. We'll create that. And then what we can do is drag these into our new folder up here. Drag that one, drag that one. And here we have our new folder containing both our Chrome and Firefox group and our Chrome or Firefox group. You can take that information and uh, create these dynamic groups and then use those groups for so many more things, uh, reports, deployments, automations, things like that. So they're super, super helpful. Anyways, if you guys have any questions, make sure to hit us up, uh, hit us up down in the comments down below. Okay, we're, we're really good at responding to those things. Also, we will link in our description. We'll have our Discord channel where we've got an awesome community out there that are always willing to help people out. If you want to make sure that you're catching more content from us, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'm Brock with PDQ.